So a function can be described as a ruler expression that takes an input, does a little bit of work on it, and produces an output. Now domain and range, which are what we are going to be talking about today, can be described as a representation of the set of all of the inputs and outputs of a given function respectively. That is, the domain refers to the set of inputs and the range refers to the set of outputs. So firstly, let's talk about the domain of a function. So domain can be defined as a set of all of the inputs of a function. In some cases, domain is forced upon a function by the basic laws of mathematics. So for example, if we take function, the function of x is equal to the under root of x, where x is our input, we know that the value of x has to be greater than what? has to be greater than or equal to zero. And this is because we're not able to take the square root of negative numbers. Another example that we can look at is g of x equals to three over x plus two. Now, where x is the input. Now, we know that in any fraction, you cannot take or zero cannot be in the denominator because three over zero is equal to syntax error. Now we know that you can't have zero in the denominator, so we must define x such that zero is never in the denominator because if it was, then our function would be undefined. So therefore, x cannot equal to negative two. That means that our, our domain, or all of the values of input of x, are every single number except for negative two. Let's look at a slightly more difficult example. Let's say the function of x is equal to three over the under root of x plus two. Now, the two rules that we mentioned last time were the, you can never take the square root of a negative number and you cannot have zero in the denominator. So in order to prevent both of those possible errors or those possible ways of having our function being undefined, we must take the domain of x to be x is greater than negative two. And this is because for every value greater than negative two, the denominator and the value inside of the under root, they're both not negative and are greater than zero. So for this function, our domain or our set of inputs is all numbers greater than negative two. And it's not greater than equal to negative two because if it were, then the value of our denominator would be zero. So the domain of a function isn't always directly forced upon it by mathematical laws. We can look at the very basic example of the function of x is equal to x, which should technically be defined over every single value, where the input should be defined for every single value of x. But sometimes the domain can be artificially imposed. So we can say that the function or the input is only defined when x is greater than zero or and less than or equal to five. Moving on to range. So the range of a function can be defined as the set of all of the outputs of a function given a particular set of inputs or domain. In order to understand this, let's look at an example. So let's say that the function of x is equal to x squared, where the domain is all real numbers. This over here means all real numbers. Now, we know that whenever you square a number, regardless of whether the number was negative or positive, you'll get a positive output. Say if you square negative two, then you get negative two times negative two, which is equal to four. And because of this, we can say that the domain or the set of all of the outputs of our numbers is greater than or equal to zero. And that's because we know that f of x has to be greater than or equal to zero. 
And we can see this much more clearly if we look at a graph of our function. So over here, we can see that y or the set of all outputs is always either greater than or equal to zero. So when trying to find the range of more difficult functions, there are three main things that you have to keep in mind. The first of those being the minimum or the smallest possible value of the function. In our last example, that would be zero, because zero is the smallest possible value of the output. The second thing that we have to look for is the maximum or the highest possible value of, of the output. In our last example, that would be infinity, because our graph could technically just keep going and going and going out of the page onto infinity. Now, the third thing that we have to look for are values for which the output of our function does not exist. And we'd come across this in examples or functions such as y is equal to x, which is defined for all values except for when x is equal to 5. That means that when x is equal to 5, the output at that point is also undefined. So where that means that y cannot be equal to 5. All right, let's look at an example of a type of question that you might come across in, your, in the O-level exam. So this question is a past paper from, is from a past paper from 2016. And it gives you a function, f of x is equal to 2 plus the under root of x minus 3. And it wants you to find the range of the function. The range of a function depends directly on the domain of the function because what you put in directly affects what you get out. And the same applies for your O level. Now, because of this, one very simple way to find the range of a function is to simply plug in the values that we're given in the domain. So over here, we're given x is greater than or equal to 3. So when we're solving, we'll just plug in x is 3. So let's say f of 3 is equal to 2 plus the under root of 3 minus 3, which is equal to 2. And from this, we can derive that the range of our function or all the outputs of our function are, will always be either greater than or equal to 2. And that is because every other value of x will either be greater than or equal to 3, which will give us a higher output. Another thing which is important to note is that over here we have this is greater than or equal to 2. We have to be very careful about this and it's greater than or equal to 2 because inside of the domain x was greater than or equal to 3. However, if x the domain was just written as x is greater than 3, our range would be just written as the function of 3 is greater than 2. That is it for this video.